I'm alive. Hey, Abby, how you going? Good. How you doing, Marty? <laughs> Great. Um, you've been popping up in our lives and uh, the Facebook groups and just with all this vitality and enthusiasm for this whole process and full of smiles and I just like, the, wow, this is so cool. I wanted to hear more of your story. So, um, yeah, you said you'd come on and have a chat and share your progress. So, um, yeah, thank you for, for having a chat and thank you for being a moderator in the group and adding your value and sharing the journey and being part of the community. Of course. Thanks for having me. And I'm so happy to be on the moderator team. You know, I feel like the last thing I thought I would be doing when I first found Data Driven Fast, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I must sort of know what I'm doing because he invited me to, to help out. So, okay. I just love collecting people who are enthusiastic for the, for the, the process and uh, helping other people. And you have made a, a ton of progress. So you, you shot me these photos from like a year ago you've come down from 240 to around 208 and i think you started with the september data driven fasting challenge and um it's been a bit of a grind and you went oh well I'm, I'm, i saw one post where you said oh i'm on the leaderboard for drop in blood sugar but um you know the weight came later and then you stacked all the hacks which i love that so i want to get into that and talk about how you slowly implemented all the different tools one at a time importantly and um making progress so uh, what's your why how did you come to want to play with this stuff and uh you know track your food and optimize your micronutrients and uh test your blood sugars and uh yeah what's your goal with all this yeah, I mean, of course, we all want to be in, in better health and, you know, we can all make improvements on that. I want to eventually have a family and being healthy for that process is super important. But mm -hmm. over a couple of challenges, I realized that my why needs to be something more immediate and tangible. <laughs> and I got to thinking about, you know, this summer and I'm going to be turning 30 this summer and what do I want to feel like? And what do I want to do to celebrate? And I want to feel strong and confident in my body and healthy. And I want to jump out of a plane. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you come up with, with parachuting and jumping out of a perfectly fine plane as your, your goal? You'd be hearing right. it. I mean, I love outdoor adventures. You know, I've done waterfall rappelling. I've done whitewater wow. rafting. I've done bridge jumping. Wow. You know, I've hiked a lot. Um, recreation is kind of my field. Uh, I work for the Boy Scouts of America. Oh, wow. and yeah, so I, I love outdoor adventure. And I think that jumping out of the plane is kind of uh, <laughs> like the, the pinnacle ultimate. of all of that, you know? So yeah. it's really cool, but you have to make weight for that. You can't be, you know, too heavy for, because it's a tandem jump. You're jumping with somebody else. So you've yeah. got to be in the right, right weight bracket to to be in that and, and be safe with the equipment. So sort of that's something. At that point, isn't I mean, it? You kind of just go, oh, my weight doesn't matter. I can jump out of right? a plane with a parachute and hope <laughs> it stops me from hitting the ground too high. And the bigger you are, the the faster you fall, I guess. Yeah, the harder <laughs> you know? the parachute is to stop you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And you've had a, a bit of a journey. I think you got you got married and like a lot of us do you start enjoying the food and you've oh had gosh. struggles with headaches and yeah so yeah. oh yeah yeah I was a hundred yeah I was 170 pounds about uh five years ago wow. and I got my body fat down to I think 25 or 26 percent and I was in amazing shape and then I met mm. the man who is now my husband who I yeah. love dearly um but you know it comes with all the happy relationship weight and yep. increased in uh you know the distance to work when we bought a house mm. and so it just kind of disrupted the the things that I had going and mm. you know I, I never really established that uh mm my healthy habits and, and doing what I was doing, you know, so I got off track and here I am. Yeah, so nice. now we're, we're working our way back and, and loving the journey. Yeah. yeah. We, we did a, a similar thing. We got married and all of a sudden you, you, you move out with your own 
finances and food and you can just enjoy all this yummy food every day with the one you love and explore it all and all this you're eating this camembert and all these crackers and indulgent food and yeah. money loves through food um it's transitioned to be healthier food now but yeah we definitely packed on the weight after we got married both of us and um that's that's how it rolls sometimes and you can mm -hmm. dial it back in it's part need. of life so, yeah that, that's part of life and good you can take the journey um so body fat change how much did your body fat change since what you started with this in september i think so i think i was at 46 percent wow. and i'm down to just over 40 i think it's 40.3 yep and, so uh, Got your eyes on, eyes on the parachute jump with with a little bit less, and you're continuing to to make great progress. So yeah, um, you topped a number, or you came on a number of leaderboards in terms of weight loss and and fat loss, and just making great progress. And every time you popped up in a a live video, I was like, "Abby's shrinking. What the, what's going on here? Yeah, it's unreal. It's just <laughs> nice to see." And and the migraines, you had a lot of. Migraines. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, a year ago, I had the worst migraine of my life and I should have gone to the hospital, but they didn't want me to go because of the pandemic. Wow. So that was really scary. Uh, I've had other ones, you know, where I'm down for three days and it's just this chronic problem, you know, eight to 10 of these a month and the prescriptions are really expensive and it's just awful. You know, I can't mm. function. I can't think. I can't even get out of bed sometimes. So, you know, I haven't had one now since before Christmas, oh, wow. and, which is incredible. My, my doctor can't believe it. And she's no, like asking what the, what the changes that made that brought that about. So, you know, re reducing the inflammation in my body mm. through proper diet and, mm. and the fasting has been very healing. And I just, you know, they're gone. It's like magic. This is, that's what DDF has done to me. It's magic. You know, I, all of a sudden they just, they just evaporated. So I, I love it. Yeah. So um, data-driven fasting versus the masterclass, what did you, what did you learn? I think you, you sort of nailed data-driven fasting, but masterclass, you said you weren't a, um, a star student at least yet, but uh, it's a bit, a bit like drinking from a fire hose, some people call it, but there's... Mm -hmm you know, you only have to pick up a few of those hacks and, and habits and fine tuning. It's a, it's a journey towards nutritional optimization. You, you never really reach it, but uh, yeah. What, what did you learn from one versus the other? So in data driven fasting, I learned a lot more about when I should eat and what I should eat during that time, like how different foods and different meals impact my, my blood sugar and how I feel. Um, I learned more about that, but then in masterclass, I mean, that just, it, it was so overwhelming and I learned <laughs> that I have a lot more to learn, but I learned enough, you know, I'm, I know that I can go into that NutriBooster tool and, and see what I can eat to fill those nutritional gaps. Mm. So, you know, if I'm starting to feel sluggish or, you know, I wake up Lizzie and all of a sudden I'm mm. like finding myself wanting to binge on stuff, I'm looking at what nutritional holes I have. And I wouldn't yeah. have known that without the masterclass, you know, I have the tools to go and find and, and fill those holes nutritionally. So I don't go into those, cool. those binging episodes. Yeah. It's amazing how much our cravings are driven, not just by the macronutrients, not getting enough protein, but all the micronutrients, a lot of amazing discussion going on about the role of protein for satiety, but once you stack in the other micronutrients as well, it's sort of the icing on the cake to really fine tune your nutrition. Um, protein often comes with the other micronutrients, but you can do more to, to fine tune it and dial it in if you want to. And yeah, we, we just want to give people a, a six week whirlwind tour of what's possible to optimize your nutrition. And then some people come back, some people keep on using the tools, but at least it's giving you a taste for what you may be able to achieve if you're willing to keep on fine tuning and yeah, it takes time. Um, so you kept a ridiculous diary, I think. Tell us about the process of reflecting on you really wanted this badly enough to like, go, how did this food affect how I felt, my hunger later, my headaches, my, my blood sugars. Tell us about that process. I think that's really powerful and not enough people do it. We give people a, 
a, a, a, a workbook in the masterclass and the challenge to reflect on that, but I, th- I don't hear enough from people actually doing it. There's plenty to get your head around, but that's sort of a super hack that helps, I think. Yeah. Um, so journaling and everything like that helps me to to be able to reflect later on. So I've actually got it with me. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> You've got this. You've got this because you do, I do, I have to remind myself that I've got this because you know one of my favorite sayings is you can't see the forest for the trees. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times we find ourselves you know, in the weeds on things and mm-hmm. stuck in the here and now, and it's hard to see the big picture. We see that a lot with people two weeks into data driven mm-hmm. fasting and they're not seeing progress. Well, if yeah. I look at my timeline and any short period of time in there, you know, I'm not going to be able to to see the progress. Mm. So with this, there are awesome tools on every page. So they kind of look like this. <laughs> yeah. And it prompts you to, to write down what you're grateful for, to write a goal for living fit today, not what I'm going to do on Monday, because mm. that never happens. Mm. And something I appreciate about my strong body, wow. how I moved and how that made me feel how my food impacted my energy levels and my mood overall. And then some different reflecting and things that inspire me. So I, I like to, to put in a lot of quotes and movie uh, or song lyrics in there, things that inspire me so I can you know, look back. I had to do this just yesterday. You know, I was struggling with some things and I went back and started reading my journal and I see that plus the graphs that I see in the app for data-driven fasting. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I was struggling there. How was I feeling? What did I do? What worked? Right. What didn't work? And, you know, I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> I know I can because I've done it. I wrote it down and I have proof right here that I struggled and I made it through. Yeah, so yeah. That's what yeah, I do and it really helps. That's so important. I love this post where you said, I'm on my third challenge and it finally clicked. I just got out of my way and I'm down 20 pounds since January. You're down more. Just got to keep on chugging and make one good choice at a time. And you see this this chart. You, like you said, a lot of the time you look at where you are each moment along that track and you don't feel like you're making progress and a lot of people yeah, like you say, one or two weeks in, go, oh, it's not making the progress I thought I'd make. And but we don't wanna you, you can you can do weight loss shapes or starve yourself for six weeks and you know, you can do all these ridiculous things that aren't sustainable and we don't really care about that. We don't care about rapid fat loss. We wanna build habits that empower people for the long term and um yeah, it's just magic what happens when you learn one thing, make that a habit, and then learn another thing and make that a habit and learn another thing. And that becomes a habit. And pretty soon, especially once you reflect on it and solidify those habits, you're a different person than you were a year ago when you were, you know, so many more pounds heavier. So what, what were some of those hacks and what was the the process that you talked about? I loved that you said, I'm stacking all the hacks. And usually hacks are these biohacking, that are these magical things that, <laughs> cheat try to cheat nature and there's really no cheat for nature because like i say lizzie always catches up and finds a way to undo all that you need to form new habits tiny habits we love bj fogg's tiny habits and atomic habits that just build one successive thing after another and pretty soon you're a a new person you're you're a sustainable version of what you want to be you don't get down to i'm talking to um uh Iva this afternoon who got down to not with data driven fasting but got down to five percent and maintained it and wow. most people don't want to get down to five percent body fat and maintain it and it takes an insane amount of work and dedication that's just the person he wanted to be and his incredible character to, to be able to do that but you just want to get to where you feel a sustainable a healthy happy person you want to be and and become a new person with new habits so what were some of the Take us through the process of stacking those habits. What did you learn first and then what did you learn next? And, you know, pro tips for people following your footsteps. So when I started back in July 2020, um, 
you know, it took some time to actually trust the process because I've been failed by so many other processes mm -hmm. that I was kind of skeptical. <laughs> and I was like, Do, can I really trust this Marty guy? Like, does he know what's going on? <laughs> oh, well, geez. he does. <laughs> so the biggest hack so, is what, what else did you try? What, so, what other approaches had you, you know, played with? I did um, Weight Watchers. I tried Diet Pills, tried Noom, tried Fentramine, which is like, it's so ridiculous to try this. It's this ridiculous drug that just kills your appetite and makes you super thirsty and like not eating is not the answer. <laughs> like, really you know, we're not going to starve ourselves. So, you know, that was probably a, a big low for me. And then I was trying to, to hack the system of Weight Watchers with all these free foods. I'm like, how is, you know, whole wheat pasta free food? Like I just eat a ton of that and gain a ton of weight. Like this doesn't make any sense to me. So, you know, I tried all of those and I, none of them worked. I had no faith in diets anymore and a long term data driven fasting to <laughs> completely rock my world. <laughs> and, you know, it took me a couple months to trust the process. And then once I actually started listening to you <laughs> and, and trusting the process, things started to, to really work. And in January, I just, you know, what the heck, let's dive in, do everything. Yep. And, you know, you keep saying, you know, increase the percentage of your protein mm. and, and your overall macros. So, you know, we're reducing the carbohydrates and the fat and increasing our protein. Okay. That seems pretty easy. I can add some protein mm. and, you know, eating earlier in the day. So you want to breakfast like a king. So mm. I was like, all right, let's do that. I can handle a good run, more food. You know? first up. <laughs> like, how can this work? So I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to try it. So I did. And even though I was above my trigger, you know, I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to trust that Marty knows what he's talking about. And I did it. And sure enough, when I set my main meal earlier in the day and made that my biggest meal of the day with a high percentage of protein, mm. you know, I was suddenly coming down to trigger again and eating twice a day mm. and, and instead of once a day or doing, you know, alternate day fasting or extended fasts, which made me feel awful and made my migraines worse. I was wow. eating more and all of a sudden I was melting. Like <laughs> all of the weight was just draining off my body. And I was like, oh my gosh, this guy knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool so talk us through uh, increasing the percentage of protein because a lot i think a lot of people here eat more protein and that often comes with more fat and they end up eating more calories and they go i'm eating more protein what's going wrong i'm gaining weight <laughs> but i think that that's something that took a long time for me to click in the in the data to understand that it's about you know you may eat a little bit more protein but it's really about dialing back the fat and carbs so the calories you're eating are more satiating and more nutritious and you're giving your body what it needs. So how did that click for you? So I hate tracking food. I hate it. But yep, you know what? It do. has to be done because, yeah. you know, you're looking at something, you're like, that looks like it's got a lot of protein. But mm -hmm. if you're not tracking it and you're not measuring it, then you really can't, can't say manage it. Exactly. So mm -hmm. I started logging everything in a chronometer and weighing the food that I was eating Yep. and looking at the bars. Mm. And so I was able to see when the protein bar was really big and the other ones were a lot smaller, I had a pretty good percentage of protein. So, you know, I'm not doing the math. I'm not trusting what looks right on a plate. Yep. I'm measuring it and making sure that my percentages are correct. Uh, and th that's the biggest thing the most important thing that a lot of people get out of the masterclass, and if you master that, a lot of other things fall into place or don't matter. They're just fine-tuning from there. But if you can, in chronometer, make your protein bar longer than your calorie energy bar, you've got your protein target and everything else often just falls into place from there. That's like the week two lesson. And if you get that, then everything else is nearly irrelevant um, and just the icing on the cake from there. So yeah, that, that, that's definitely the biggest the biggest lever in, in activating satiety to help you not feel hungry all the time and give you the nutrients you need. Yeah, it's been, been huge. You know, as soon as I started eating more protein, you know, I got to the point where I was like, I don't want to eat anything else. You know, I'm just not so interested in it. 
And These meals are so big, everybody says. Exactly, yeah. And it's, it doesn't even mean that, you know, you're eating a ton of food. It's just that that protein is mm. keeping you so full that mm. you have no interest in, in going home and eating everything as soon as you walk in, in the door. Mm. Mm. That's really exciting. So what else did you do from there? You moved your first meal, you know, maybe a little bit earlier and tried to prioritize the protein at that yeah, um, prioritizing the protein and then adding those electrolytes was super important. Yep. Um, so not only have those helped a lot with the migraines, but they've mm. helped me with the getting those minerals in that, mm. you know, a lot of times you can find yourself craving there. Mm. So, you know, there's a lot of great tips throughout the guides that I encourage mm. everybody to actually read the guides. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, it takes a while to find what works but best for you you know those two were the biggest hacks that worked for me yeah. um but go through and and read them and tweak you know you have you know free range to experiment this isn't mm. like a hard and fast to do this mm. to the t it's mm. find what works best for you and yeah. you know measure your your blood glucose and yeah. if you know that carb plus that fat don't work for you and your diet mm. then don't do that again you know yeah, yeah that's a it's not a one size fits all approach. It's a reflect on your blood glucose. How does that actually affect your body at the time you're eating based on your circadian rhythm? When you go to bed, when you exercise, when you get up and go to work and you're ready to jump out of bed and your blood sugar boosts a little bit. And, you know, your insulin sensitivity is really unique based on your own unique circadian rhythm. And that little uh, blood glucose meter is so powerful to understand exactly what's going in your body and when you need to mm -hmm. refuel and if your blood sugar is high in the morning then you don't need fuel you just need nutrients and you can smash your appetite and later on if your blood sugars are dropped and you want to binge on donuts then maybe some extra carbs without the fat can help smash your appetite and give you the give you the um, uh, satiety you want without overfueling on on the carb plus fat um somebody asked what electrolyte supplements are recommended to add to my diet i suppose you can comment on this as well abby but um we've got a optimized electrolyte mix that you can check out and add to to make sure you get enough potassium magnesium um, sodium but really in the master class we want to train people to not need supplements and and yeah that's the process of getting to week four and five and checking what you're actually eating and by that time, hopefully you got to the point where you go, oh, I don't need all these supplements anymore. I can throw them out um, or stop paying ridiculous amounts of money for them because the food I'm eating is giving me the, the nutrients I'm, I'm, I'm needing. So it, did you play with electrolyte supplements? So you just try getting it from food or what, what did you find work for you? So I definitely supplement just because of the migraines. Um, yep. So I know that I need extra of that in my, my diet. So mm. I put it in my water. I made ice pops with them, mm. which is very, uh, oh, wow. very refreshing. Uh, with the little, electrolyte mix? Yeah, I just, I've got a little uh, popsicle mold and I do a little uh, lemon juice, a little bit of swerve sweetener oh, cool. and the electrolyte mix, maybe throw in some uh, frozen blueberries there. And it's just super refreshing, keeps me from wanting ice cream all the time, which I love yeah. ice cream. <laughs> and it helps me get those electrolytes in. Um, definitely getting your electrolytes from food is best. Um, but just knowing that I need extra, I do use the optimized electrolyte mix daily. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's amazing how many people have found that really useful. And yeah, the potassium is a really big thing that a lot of people miss. Most people get okay sodium and a lot of people too much sodium if they're eating a, a, a really processed diet because sodium is always added because we crave more sodium. But it's the potassium in our diet that we don't get enough of um, and we crave it really badly and magnesium. And once you've put that in it help yeah it really helps so it's exciting how many people have found that helpful um so what else did you learn from the market oh sorry oh, i was gonna ask in terms of exercise you said you were walking more and just drinking more water and getting outside and being energetic how did that help with you know, especially the walking yeah i mean walking is great if you are especially like right above trigger and you want to eat yeah. uh or you you want a little crazy you know it's great to get out and it's a low intensity exercise that helps kind of just use up that available glucose that you've got yeah. um 
but it's it's easy for anyone to do and mm -hmm. you know it's very easy on your joints and everything so i love walking i've got two dogs who have found their way in here and are by my feet <laughs> right now <laughs> uh that and they love going for walks so uh we do that a lot we like to go hiking and that adds a little bit of uh intensity to it because mm -hmm. there's a lot of hills around me that we like to hike uh, but mainly it's just finding what brings you joy and makes you happy mm. because there's really no point in doing this if we're not enjoying yeah. the journey. Totally. So find what you like, you know, dance in your kitchen, go swimming, go kayaking. I love kayaking. Um, you know, whatever it is that you really love, just get your body moving. Yeah. Uh, and I think walking is underrated because we just don't move enough, but it also just helps drop your glucose because it's burning fat. And if you get into something, if you're doing intense exercise, not that resistance training is amazing to build your muscle strength, but the really high intensity exercise, especially in that gray zone between, um, you know, low intensity and really high intensity just raises your blood sugars and sort of stimulates appetite without burning a lot of energy necessarily. So that the, the low intensity walking, when you can still breathe and carry on a conversation, it's not overly stressful or intense. It, it just, you know, it drops your blood sugars and burns the fat and trains your body to burn fat. And yeah, it's, it's good overall and definitely needs to be part of more people's routine. Definitely mine, because I end up sitting in front of a computer all day and sitting at work and home. And yeah, so it's it's hard to do, hard to find. because we're all You've got to get our... one of those treadmill desks. Yeah, everybody on the lives is on these treadmill desks. And it's crazy. Anyway, I keep saying that. They're uh, great. I, I just got a new light, but um, a treadmill might be the next purchase. Um, <laughs> So how did you find the process of fine tuning your micronutrients? That was another a challenge, but you started to get the hang of it. Yeah. I mean, first of all, just realizing how deficient I was in a lot of these nutrients was crazy. Yeah. Um, and, and getting into the masterclass, just doing the, the discovery part of it, uh, mm -hmm. kind of like baselining in, in data driven fasting where it's, you know, here's where you are right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well now I have a place where I can work from. Yeah. You know, I know, know where I'm at, know where I need to go and finding foods that aren't freaky to me. You know, some people are kind of freaking out about, Oh my gosh, I see a lot of, you know, organ meats and seafood and I don't eat that. You, you yeah. can do it That's no okay. matter what. Yeah. So yeah, and you find the things that you enjoy eating that uh, are accessible and affordable. And I love how you know City was in the masterclass making your own head cheese from organ meats from the butcher, and people are going, <laughs> "Wow, that's crazy!" And meanwhile, Karen's you know got a similar score with her nutrients with a a, a vegetarian diet. And I just love that people can create their own path with their own diet preferences to dial in the nutrition however it works for them so um yeah so so how did you how did you manage the mind game you talked a little bit about it but just the ups and downs and that often comes with that i failed at this before and i'm a failure and i can never do this and it's sort of the mind game that plays in our, in our heads a lot of the time especially if we've failed a lot before and just you seem to have taken baby steps and managed to go okay i found my baseline i'm going to keep moving forward just what was the mind game that you played there and how did you win it so i think after failing so much i got sick of failing and <laughs> i'm i'm done with it i'm tired of that negativity you know we're not going to get anything positive positive out of you know, guilting ourselves or saying that we're a failure, because if you keep saying you're a failure, then you will be a failure. You will be a failure. Exactly. So I'm done with that. You know, if yeah. I say this, this isn't a failure, this is a learning experience and I am learning and growing from this, then I will learn and grow from it. You know, yeah. even if I, you know, you know, got busy and didn't eat all day and got home and binged on all the things that I shouldn't yeah. be eating, then yeah. I learned something from that. You know, I woke Lizzie up and I need to be more prepared. And, and you captured that as a learning opportunity and said, okay, let's, let's petition that. Let's write about that. What did I do that I could have done better next time? I, I waited too long. I didn't eat the right foods, et cetera, et cetera. You can dial that in and, and learn from that. And that's really powerful. Yeah, we're never going to learn if we, you know, don't take the opportunity. You know, we have yeah. to to do that ourselves 
And we can't, can't beat ourselves up because there's enough of that in our culture yeah. already, enough of the, the guilt that people put on you for not looking a certain way or the, the number on the scale is not what you want. You know what? We are where we are and we know that we're making progress. We need to be a little easier on ourselves and give ourselves some grace and, mm. and just stay positive. Yeah. You know? I'm I'm done with being mean to myself. I don't like that. I like myself too much to hate on myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely choose your own journey and keep focused on where you want to go. And exactly. like so much of our obesity and health challenges are really, uh, we're a product of our current environment that we're so maladapted to and all the foods that are created to just drive this amazing dopamine overdrive that makes us want more and crave more of those cheap, hyperpalatable, processed crap foods. And you know, that's not your fault so much. Like, that, that's not your fault. You were born in, you know, 1990 or I was born in the 1970s where this stuff started to to blow up. And, you know, but we do have the technology, the knowledge, the understanding of how to reverse engineer what has been created, these frankenfoods that are just hard to escape. But if you do escape them, you can, you can create a new little sub branch of humanity that can be healthy happy and escape that so that's sort of my big dream and um yeah maybe even that will help the environment and everything else in the planet I had a great time chatting to rub wolf about all that yesterday so that was got to got to meet my hero and he was awesome <laughs> so yeah uh, anyway um gush gush <laughs> um yeah anything else you wanted to share or just like tips for people who are just starting on this journey to put one foot in front of another and, and not be judgmental and not beat yourself up and be your own worst enemy? Yeah. I mean, I would just encourage everyone to to give it some time. You know, it took me six months to, to finally see some progress. And part of it is just being able to, to trust something again, to learn it all, because there's a lot of learning within mm. data-driven fasting and within masterclass. You know, I need to do a few more masterclasses. I'm, <laughs> I know that. I just need some time to be able to do it. Uh, yeah. Just just be nice to yourself. And, you know, it didn't take a, a day or two weeks to get to wherever you are. Mm. And you know that it's going to take a little bit of time. Don't try to force it. Don't try mm. to rush it. Take mm. it one day at a time, one good decision at a time. And mm. embrace the community. You know, everybody is here for support. I've never seen another community like this. The support oh, and, and just non judgmental people that are there. Everyone's so incredible. Uh, you know, you and Alex are incredible. I don't even know what to say. These, these uh, lives that we've done are just so helpful. And I encourage people to embrace those, get on there, even if you don't ask a lot of questions, if you're like me and you just kind of sit there and smile and you're like, oh, this is great. I don't know what I'm doing here. Like, it's okay. Like, just join and, and listen because there's so many amazing questions that are being answered and you can learn a lot. So just embrace the, the community and enjoy the process. That's cool. And how are you going now? It's, you know, the weight loss, I think, is slowing. And as you get to a more optimal weight, it's a little bit harder. So I suppose that's another level of, of challenge to say, okay, I'll, I'll just keep on going and, and building on this going forward. And I'm happy with the rate I'm, I'm losing at. And I'm, going, I'm reaching towards my goal of optimal health and optimal Abby and optimal mum for the future and a healthy, happy life. Yeah. I mean, I'm not at 2.3 percent a week anymore or yeah. weight loss uh, <laughs> oh. so, you know that was really fun yeah. but you know it's still great seeing seeing non-scale victories happening you know clothes fitting differently um mm. i was at an appointment yesterday and the secretary was like wow you look really different i was yeah. like what do you mean and she's just like you've lost weight and i'm like <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> like, I know, but like, I didn't think anybody else could notice. And she's like, no, like, I can notice. Like, this That's is, this so is nice. awesome. What have you been doing? So, I've, you know, telling her about what I was doing. And it's it's great. You know, you, you got to take every day and celebrate every win. And, you know, today I'm I'm up two pounds. Tomorrow I'll be down three pounds. And then I'll be up four. Like, you know, it's just a slow 
trend that you got to keep riding. You know, don't get discouraged by those little tiny blips. You know, ignore the scale. Yeah. We're not friends anyway. So <laughs> we're just going to, you know, just take the data as it is. And it's not personal. You know, just keep yeah. going and enjoying the process. Keep learning. Mm. And, you know, I know I'll get there. I've got eight pounds left so I can go skydiving this summer. And oh, I will make it. <laughs> it's like great. right in sight. So, you know, I'm I'm going to hit it and I'm going to jump out of a plane and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> great. It's great that you've got a specific goal and a specific sort of, I want to make it by this time frame. And that, that, that's awesome. And you don't just look skinny, you look healthier and happier and more vibrant. And, you know, it's, you're just sort of glowing because you're giving your, nourishing your body with, with what it needs. And the other thought I had is like, knowing and doing are two different amazing things it, it, you know you can have all the head knowledge you can have all the you can know all about micronutrients and all the theory but until you actually put it into practice one habit at a time you have to retrain your lizard brain until it becomes a habit and that that just takes time and um as you said it's a great supportive community that um, it's just an honor to be a part of all these amazing people and yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming on to share and have a chat. And thanks for your dogs that are uh, joining in. And um, yeah, thanks for your time. Looking forward to continual involvement. And um, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me, Marty. Hey, thanks, Eddie. See ya. Bye.